In the northeast corner of the continent, there is a land they call High Africa. And here man has lived for generations. Here he has made his tools and left them behind and made his tools again. Here he has created from a fertile mind and to answer a need, the fragments that testify to his having lived. For half a million years on this plateau, this green garden, he has left his mark. And here his sons, 20,000 generations removed, live and create and leave their mark. And everything is new and nothing changes. Man lives on in high Africa, and this is his story. The story of man in Ethiopia. Cherish the land, they said, those ancient men whose simple wisdom is whispered through the ages. Never give up the land. And on the rich, warm, sun-drenched land, man heeded the voices of his fathers, calling out through the silent eons of time, those voices buried in the dark tomb of the past. And so he plowed and reaped and plowed again. And the land passed to his sons and his sons' sons. And his sons' sons lived and tilled the land and warmed themselves in that glistening, transparent light that spans time from the beginning to the now. And across the golden land came the cattle in their millions to feed in virgin fields and to feed in turn the endless migrations of people. From the north, from the east, across the great sea. Sons of Ham at first, and then the sons of Shem, moving inland from the rivers to settle in green valleys, falling prey to other peoples, who came to pillage and to loot, and stayed to marry and to breed new generations. And always the voices whispered, cherish the land. Once the land belonged to fearsome things, and man hid away in the shadowy recesses of the great mountains. With wondering eyes, he watched the creatures of his world, struggling to understand them and to master them. No matter that outside they roamed in freedom, within the cold, damp cavern, a human hand had caught their souls. Long ago, man descended from the mountain and claimed the world. But every so often in the high places, he stumbles across a shallow cave, a small pocket of eternity, where the ancient struggle still goes on. And God so loved the people that he gave them the blue-topped highlands and the golden valleys and rain in its season. And the people rejoiced and made a festival. And this great God, father of the spirits of the rivers and the trees, sent forth his son, a newborn babe. And all the world sang hallelujah. Gather, all ye holy men. It is the twelfth day of Christmas. Rejoice in Epiphany. Sing of Timket and be new baptized. And from the Holy of Holies, bring forth the word and carry it before you that the people may see it and be glad. And David danced before the Lord 
David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the horn. said, Sing and dance and be joyous unto me, and beat the drum, beat the drum. The ark of the Lord they carry to the waterside. And there they set their tents. The fatted sheep are slaughtered and washed down with honey wine. Torches are lit, and the dancing continues through the night. For this is the season of harvest, a time of plenty and of thanksgiving. Now is the time of the baptism of Christ. In the golden dawn, a thousand Jordans blessed by black-robed Johns chanting a timeless litany of hope and faith and devotion. And now the people gather at the waterside. In the cool, hushed morn they gather. The sacred chants make ripples in the blessed waters, falling gently on the waters. To climax once again in ritual baptism, an annual renewal in blessed waters, a triumphant revel. sacred word returns to the house of God. Men whose lives are spent on horseback contest their skill at Faras Buks, remnant of a fiercer past when this game was played with spears and the loser did not live to play again. seventh day the fields lie empty and the people gather on the meadow. White clouds drift across a Sunday sky. Flies drone and in that slow-paced timeless hour the women dance. <laughs> Three thousand years ago, the beautiful Makeda, Queen of Sheba, traveled to Jerusalem. And there she conceived a son. And when her time was near, she grew anxious, and she said to King Solomon that she wished to return to her own land. And Solomon sent with her the firstborn of his people to accompany her to Ethiopia and be companions to his son. And from the twelve tribes came these Jews they called Felashas, the wanderers. And here they live according to the ancient law. Devoted to their God and to the potter's craft. And it was written, for the price of wisdom is above rubies, 
the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. But kings who in their wisdom forged an empire with iron and with steel valued rubies and topazes as well, and the finest craftsmen of the time fashioned their crowns. From a heritage not fully known and only briefly glimpsed, artists turned their vision outward to the future, to the great unfolding promise. And even now, as new plowed earth upturns the ancient stones, the choruses of unknown men break forth from long, dark centuries of silence. Africa, that great mute continent, is singing. I draw a line that pleases me, or fashion something fine from molded clay, I grasp within my hand the hands of those who came before me, and I touch the hearts of others not yet born. In Lalibela, man's art is carved in stone. A massive monolithic testament to a faith that moved the mountains. King Lalibela's dream of a new Jerusalem. A fantastic vision from the 12th century, still alive in the 20th. A vision so inspiring and so compelling that it draws pilgrims from all over the empire up the jagged cliffs to this hallowed ground. For centuries, they labored on the mountaintops, those holy men, those endless lines of faceless men, to bring forth from the living rock, like jewels from the living rock, a monument to match their massive faith. Preachers come from every rock-hewn church, from every sunken citadel. Keepers of the sacred manuscripts, the gleaming printed words, they come to join the people who gather on the mountaintop near to heaven and to God. And from the far corners come other preachers, Sandal shod and simply clothed, they walk among the people, close in spirit to the rabbis, teachers like the first disciples. And all along the mountainside, the people cluster, and they wait in quiet reverence for the preachers to begin. And they hear with awe and wonder the stories that they tell. For the preachers tell the stories they have told 10,000 times in ringing parables, the story of mankind. Perhaps nowhere else in the Christian world does man come so close to the spirit of the early church. For where else does man enjoy a setting so serene, so majestic, so in harmony with nature and with God? On the high plateau, a man's life is spent with others. Always there are things to share. A word, a greeting, a quiet moment in the sun. An interval outside the round of daily chores, when bright displays attract the eye accustomed only to a pale horizon. And 
the compelling fascination of the meat vendor, whose agile hands and sharp knife make him more adept at rending flesh than jackal and hyena ever were. And when the marketing is done, the buying and the selling and the talk of cattle and of crops, there is the dance. before the night begins. Man stands in tranquil splendor and at last moves on. In September, when maskal daisies bloom in fields washed green in three months of rain, and the air is fresh and full of the smell of sweet, warm earth. The people gather to embrace the season and the special holiday at Herald's. For this is the anniversary of the finding of the true cross. Jerusalem in that time, they lit a fire, a blazing beacon. And on the mountaintops, the fires bloomed, echoing from peak to peak across the world. And in the hearts of the faithful, too, a fire was kindled. Across the centuries, the fire glows for 1,600 years and more. Every year, in every hamlet, a bonfire gleams in the twilight 
in the season when the mastel flowers. Once in the Horn of Africa, a great civilization flourished. Aksum stood with Babylon, with Egypt, and with Rome. O Ezana, king of Aksum, of Himyar, of Radan, of Siriamo, of Beja, and of Kaso. Ezana, son of the unvanquished Ares, where are the peoples you once ruled? Of Aksum, great kingdom, only obelisks remain. Tall shadows in the waning sun. Today, in our time, the sun has risen again over this historic empire. Heir to the throne of Solomon, a legendary hero in his own lifetime, Haile Selassie, enlightened leader, has restored to majesty a softly slumbering kingdom. For more than half a century, this man, beloved father to his people, has labored to propel his nation out of the past and into the future. Today, in his modern capital, the nations of Africa have built their home. Today, throughout the empire, an industrious people produced goods for themselves and all the world. A scientist does careful research. And at the controls of a powerful fan jet, skilled pilots link the major cities of three continents. hillside, other Ethiopians project the nation into space and record in microseconds the coursing path of man-made satellites. Half a million years ago, in this area, man fashioned stone tools to help him cope with a world he couldn't understand. Today, with a new tool, a giant camera telescope, man probes the night sky in search of answers to the age-old questions. And everything is new, and nothing changes. And across the face of the land, men continue in the ways of their fathers. And the land is rich, and the golden grain is plentiful, and the cattle are fruitful and multiply. And in their season, the rains come, and the water is sweet, to nourish the land. And the people observe the covenant they made with their fathers, and they cherish the land. is his story. Addisina maale leilen ya wayana maale leilen Addisina kana nindis ya wayai mugega dinjis 